they come. And they're off for the first of 13. Kimberly Coe comes out with power. Last call at Den stands on the pylons. And it's flying standby in coach. Another in fact of Viva La Vida Loca. Then it's personal finance and La Beach. And the leader is Kimberly Coe as they follow the lady around the track. Last call at Dems is but a length behind. Space of three back to flying standby. And it's Viva La Vida Loca. Personal finance in La Beach is at the bottom of the six pack. And uncorking the most speed and with the lead is Kimberly Coe. In a quarter of 29 and one fifth. So, trying to do it like Sebastian did it. Kimberly Coe leading it. A length and a half. Second, last call at Dems. And it's flying standby in third. In behind is Gold Bike, Viva La Vida Loca. Personal Finance and La Beach still remains quiet as they head down the lane. And Kimberly Coe has been the boss since the car let him go. Last call at Dems second. And then it's flying standby, Viva La Vida Loca on the outside. Is now making some headway. Personal Finance echoes that move. And La Beach following those two in a half of one minute even. It's Kimberly Coe holding to a length. Viva La Vida Loca on the outside. Now pouring on some heavy heat inside. Last call at Dems. All out as Personal Finance to stay with the cover. Then a bottled up flying standby on the outside. La Beach halfway on the back side. And Kimberly Coe wants more breathing room. Does Miller and gets it. Stretching it a length and a quarter on the outside. Outside, Viva La Vida Loca on the inside. Last call at Dems. Three quarters in 129 and two. They got to be Kimberly Coe, and they got less than a quarter of a mile to do it. Last call at Dems, tied for second with Viva La Vida Loca. Not firing his personal finance in a block flying standby. Heading for home, Kimberly Coe arrives two and a half lengths before last call at Dems did. On the outside, Viva La Vida Loca and flying standby, who goes to the passing lane for a minor award. Kimberly Coe all the way. Let's have it to go. And Il Son Farty and it's PT Royal. Got those 12 year old legs like spring chickens bouncing right out of there. On the inside, Keystone Victory, a late lead from Pacific Centerfold. And comes Jet Set Matt, followed by Classic Synth and Derby's Goal. And Dreamland's Big C has them all to pass Bob as they head up the back stretch. And senior member of the field, P.T. Royal, and everybody giving him the honors to lead the way a length. Keystone Victory is second, and it's Jet Set Matt in third. Under a pull, Classic Scent is fourth. And comes Derby's goal. Lomar had a change of heart and brings Pacific Centerfold to last. In back of Dreamland's Big C, all behind P.T. Royal, behind a quarter in 28 and four-fifths. So, P.T. Royal bent on going all the way through the 80-degree air and 300% humidity. It's P.T. Royal leading at a tight length. Keystone victory right on his heels and wheels in second a length and a half to Jet Set Matt. And it's classic scent in behind Derby's goal. And comes Dreamland's Big C and Pacific Center Fold is losing touch with the pack at the half in 59 seconds even. So they head around the clubhouse turn. P.T. Royals bad bragging rights throughout. Keystone victory is second. Here comes Classic Scent now showing a sniff on the inside. Jet Set Matt right behind the cover is Derby's goal. They bend to the back stretch. P.T. Royal, you don't hang around this long unless you got a lot of heart. And this guy does, leading it a length. Keystone victory is second. Classic Scent all of a sudden can smell victory no more. On the outside, Derby's goal. On the inside, Jet Set Matt. Three quarters in 128 and two. Around the last turn, PT Royal is giving it his all, leading it a length and a half. Keystone victory is second. Outside Derby's goal is third. Then a pin down Jet Set Matt. I'm um, into Heartbreak Alley. PT Royal, Keystone victory on the outside. Gives it his best on the passing lane. But PT Royal's got his measure. Keystone victory going to come in about 10 cents short. PT Royal all the way. Keystone victory second. Derby's goal third in 150. Here they come, and they're off, and the bookends are giving it a go. Tarport Aaron, J.K.'s song and dance, strikes the right chord. On the inside, Lil Miss Hanover, and it's Magic Moments, and Felicia Scott. Honors to the back stretch first is Tarport Aaron. Soon the baton will be passed over to J.K.'s song and dance, and Pierce gladly grabs it. Sears is back to second uh, with Tarport Aaron. Another length and a half more to Little Miss Hanover. Magic moments. San Felicia Scott has serious work ahead of her. 
in a quarter of 27 and 2 6. So it's J.K. Song and Dance paving the way around the Stone Dust Carpet, leading it a length. Harport Aaron in a back pocket in second, a length back to Little Miss Hanover third. And comes Magic Moments, and Felicia Scott is last in the quintet as they ramble and amble down to the half and an unventful half with J.K. Song and Dance marking up the numbers on the teletimer. Second one is 58 seconds flat. So J.K. Song and Dance leading the way. Tarport Aaron, a patient second, and why not? Hello, Miss Hanover is sitting in mid-pack, a length and a half to Magic Moments, and Felicia Scott has yet to put a move together as they head to the back stretch, and J.K. Song and Dance is all sweet music. Now it's getting a little bit louder. Now stretching it to two. Tarport air in second. Little Miss Hanover third. Positions hasn't changed for one second. And magic moments of Felicia Scott. J.K. Song and Dance is all the right answers so far. Three quarters and one twenty-six and four. And just to the runway on the turn. J.K. Song and Dance a length. Tarport Aaron's going to have the passing lane to have a shot to beat her. And in between is Little Miss Hanover. They come for home. J.K. Song and Dance. Pierce says go. And it's a half length. Got to play with Little Miss Hanover on the outside. Trying to be the upset minded little Miss Hanover on the inside tarport, Aaron. Oh, oh baby, break. Here they come. Nanny Fine coming out fine. Texas Hellfire shows some life on the inside northeast, heading north. Then it's try to top me in fourth. In behind, Unitas is back here at Freehold and Yankee Dusty and Swifty Misty. Oh, they take it to the back stretch, and Northeast has hooked, out hooked the field. Nanny Fine takes the back seat to him in second, and it's three back to Texas Hellfire in third, and then three to try to top me. And comes the Wiley veteran, Unitas, with the frequent travel miles, Yankee Dusty and Swifty Misty, and Northeast racks up a quarter in 28 and four-fifths. A length and a half behind is Nanny Fine. Then it's a space of three to Texas Hellfire. Is falling a little further behind on the turn. Coming off the three-turn place. And it's try to top me in fourth. As they work their way down the stretch. And Northeast has bragging rights. Nanny Fine is second. Three lengths to Texas Hellfire. Improving on the straightaways, as you might expect. Then it's try to top me. Unitas and Yankee Dusty. And Swifty Misty showing no power. At the halfway point in 58 and 3 fifths. So round and round they go, all in chase of Northeast, who's been paving the way around the oval, a length and a half to play with. Natty finds second. Try to top me now begins the uphill climb on the inside, Texas Hellfire. And it's United still on the pylons, and so is Yankee Dusty. Midway on the back stretch. Now the lines are being shaken in Northeast, which means he's got troubles and he's got to try to top me to try to fight off. And the bad news is Marshall had to give the lead over to Smith. The good news is Marshall saved a lot of money on his car insurance. Three quarters in 129 flat. And try to top me in one fell swoop is putting this baby out of reach. Taking second on the outside is Unitas over the tiring northeast. Meanwhile, one move and that's all she wrote. Try to top me is a jog burger all the way to the end. And a scramble for second. Unitas on the outside. Yankee Dusty. Try to top me. Cruise and home. Second Yankee Dusty up for third, Swifty Misty in 159 and 2. Here they come, Harold Dancer Memorial. And they're off. Front end center is A Rod on the inside. Tsunami is out in good shape. Now giving it a roll on the outside is BJ Chinook. And BJ Chinook has just made a very expensive break. BJ Chinook lost its stride. And now getting in nicely in mid pack was Keystone Savage. So all said and done. A Rod has control of this. Leading it a length and a half. Tsunami second. Space of four back to Mal's gift. And the Hedgy Sears got Keystone Savage in range in fourth. Another three back to the leader's partner, Stone Cold Steve. Then it's three to Nicole in one. Win back Adam and way back is BJ's Chinook after the very costly mistake in a quarter of 28 and three fifths. At the head of the lineup is A Rod with the power, a length and a half. Tsunami floating behind in second. Another three back as they arrive into the freehold stretch is Mal's gift. 
Keystone Savage ready to go on the inside. Stone Cold Steve, the call in one is going to follow Keystone Savage, and then comes win back Adam. Halfway home in 59 seconds even. It's A Rod, still the one to catch. Right behind second is Tsunami. Outside, Keystone Savage is now beginning to pick things up even more. Nicole in one has made a break. Nicole in one, the four is off stride as they go to the back stretch. And A Rod now turns on the burners, leading at a length and a half. Sears says you're not getting away and is starting to reel him in with Keystone Savage. And with the program is Tsunami in third. Another five back to an oncoming win back at him. Three quarters in 128 and 4. They take it around the turn and it is Keystone Savage who collars the leader. On the outside Tsunami win back at him is picking up momentum even more. On the inside A-Rod is a tiring fourth. Uh, coming for home Keystone Savage is his race to win or lose spreading it to three. On the outside win back at him then Tsunami and A-Rod. Uh, Keystone Savage he just needs another 16th. He's got it. He's a dancer winner. Keystone Savage gets the 2005 Harold Dancer Memorial over win back Adam, then A Rod and Tsunami and Here they come. And Welder Day comes out ambitiously. Star Lantern on the outside. Now is heating up. Then comes Peaceful. Parker Hanover, Blake Castle, Havana Harry, and he's a hot one. And he's a fast one, his 12-year-old Star Lantern, Welder D, giving him a little stretch of Ruski. And it's a couple lengths back to Peaceful in third. Parker Hanover reserved in fourth. And it's Blake Castle, Havana Harry, and he's a hot one. And six Browns following the gray, and Star Lantern is the ghost with the most in a quarter of 28 and one-fifth. It's Star Lantern showing him how it's done a length. Welder D is second, a length and a half to Peaceful in third. Parker Hanover fourth. And comes Gold Bike Blake Castle of Vanna Harry. And he's a hot one as they wind their way into the stretch. As the Yankees drawing closer to the top while the Mets fade day by day. And it is Star Lantern leading at a length. Welder D is second. Peaceful third. Parker Hanover now begins to get untracked right behind Blake Castle on the inside of Vanna Harry. He's a hot one. Remains where he's been throughout in a 58-3 opening half. Now they're heading around the clubhouse, turn in the closing half, and it's Star Lantern, still a length, Welder D, tailgating second. Parker Hanover, now Dubay's asking everything that he has, and now is edging closer to Star Lantern, and picking up the covers, Blake Castle as they go halfway on the back stretch, and Cat now doing the line work with Star Lantern, leading at a length, Welder D second. Parker Hanover doesn't have it today and is stopping badly. Blake Castle's being taken out with him. Inside's the place to be here. Peaceful is waiting for room. Three quarters and 128 and one. Around the last turn, Star Lantern still doing the best of what he has. Welder D. Peaceful has shaken loose on the outside, and here comes Peaceful. Meanwhile, Star Lantern holding a length and a half. Peaceful on the outside, coming like a wild horse. It's Star Lantern. Peaceful's on the warpath. Peaceful on the outside, coming on to get it all. Star Lantern second, Welder D third, and 158. Here they come. And they're off. Spat one is hard off the car. Then the visitors are coming up. Columbus Hanover. And the offing hopes victory is now looking for a space. But Spat one is out kicked the field. Easily dropping in second now is Columbus Hanover. Then the Santa Maria is GV Super Bell. Helps victory dropped in fourth in front of Amesbury and Dakota Jude, who always saves the best for last, is last. With Spad 1 having the initiative, second Columbus Hanover, GV Super Bell third, and a quarter of 28 and 4 fifths. So it's Spad 1 controlling thing, and right in the inside, here comes Hope's victory out of the four hole. Now to make move number two happen, alongside fellow shipper Columbus Hanover, GV Super Bell is locked in. Amesbury has come to the outside, and Dakota Jude is six of the six. They worked their way into the stretch and hopes of victory now is overtaken. Spat one. And on the outside, GV Super Bell. On the inside, Columbus Hanover. Outside, Amesbury. Inside, Nakota Jude. And a 58 2 half. And the second move has hopes of victory on the lead a length and a half. Spat one holds the second. And in third is Columbus Hanover. GV Super Bell hasn't left the inside yet. Amesbury is the mirror. And a length and a half to Nakota Jude. A move up the back stretch from Washington, PA, to the lead at Freehold. Hopes victory leads at a length and a half. Spat one second. 
In third is Columbus Hanover. And Amesbury has now got Columbus in front of him. Three quarters in one, 26 and three. Last turn, Hope's victory holding to a length and a half. Tied for second, Columbus Hanover and spat one on the inside. And it's GV Super Bell with no space. Amesbury, Nakota Jude took some bad steps and is way out of it now. In the meanwhile, Hope's victory is clinging to an arrow lead. Spat one on the inside. On the outside, Columbus Hanover. And the visitors are going to be one, two. And it's Columbus Hanover who finds the lead and land second hopes victory over spat one in one fifty here they come and off the motor car with a big motor is sweet sacrosu l g g is going to be second after these words from his easy pass bolero mickett and caitlin q sugar and sacra and susan m and the big favorite has zero problem getting the lead. Sweet Sacrosu, last time in traffic. This time, nothing but clear sailing. LGG is second. A couple of lengths back to Miss Easy Pass third. And it's Bolero Mickett, Caitlin Q, Sugar and Sacra, Susan M is seventh. And a quarter, Walston 28 and one fifth. It's Sweet Sacrosu leading at a tight length. LGG second best. And Mizizi Pass third, Bolero make it fourth. Everybody's following right behind the other one. And Caitlin Q, Sugar and Sacra, and Susan M. As they stroll down the stretch, if you beat Sweet Sacra Sue, you win the race. LGG leads pursuit in second, Mizizi Pass third, Bolero make it. And Sweet Sacra Sue under a death grip has him a half and a very mild 58 and three fifths. So Sweet Sacrosu takes him along. LGG is second. Miss Easy Pass is third. First one out is Caitlin Q. And Brennan now has to give the word to Sweet Sacrosu to show a little bit more. On the outside, Caitlin Q on a full scale blitz as they head up the back stretch. And Caitlin Q pokes a nose in front. That's Sweet Sacrosu. Got plenty left in the tank on the inside. LGG. Then it's Bolero Mickett. Miss Easy Pass. And Sweet Sacrosu edges away to a half. Three quarters in one, 27 and two. It's Sweet Sacrosu trying to put away Caitlin Q. Well, LGG is still waiting her turn. Bolero Mickett soon will go three deep. And now's about the time as they head for home. And Sweet Sacrosu, Brennan says, let's go. LGG on the inside, on the outside, Caitlin Q. Bolero Mickett, no firepower today. And it's Sweet Sacrosu, too much. LGG second over Caitlin Q. Here they come. And Let Loose is number one fan. Outside Classical Man. Show me the Monet on the inside. G Spring. So it's the fan and the man. Going to share the early bragging rights. G Spring fills it in on the outside. Show me the money. Pierce could add a hole. Didn't want it. And now is right behind Classical Man as Pierce is waiting for those two to separate. Number one fan and Classical Man. So, the fan and the man still at each other's throats, and Pierce is getting tired of waiting with Show Me the Money, and now aggressively goes up for the lead. Another three back to G-Spring, half a dozen to Coyote Creek behind a heated speed duel, and it's another five back to John R. Yankee, and off stride went Rap Happy Cash in a quarter of 27 and four-fifths. So, Show Me the Money is trying to get the money on the top end, and second is Classical Man. And it's the number one fan, Mikey, in behind G Spring. Another five back to Coyote Creek, three to John R. Yankee, and hopes a loss for Rap Happy Cash. In a half of 57 seconds, it is Show Me the Monet leading him around the length and a half. Classical Man leads pursuit in second. Number one fan operating in third. First move coming out of G Spring and Coyote Creek. If he has enough, we'll have cover. And he goes up behind G Spring as they continue up the backside. It is Show Me the Monet leading at a tight length. Classical Man is second. G Spring on an uphill grind in third. Off stride when Coyote Creek. Coyote Creek has made a break. Back in the fourth, number one fan, three quarters in 127. It's Show Me the Money has been holding tough throughout. On the outside, G Spring is drawn within a neck. On the inside, Classical Man is going to dial passing lane real soon. Back trotting and coming on again is Coyote Creek. Hey, coming to the freeway of fame. Show Me the Money on the outside. G Spring has worn him down. On the inside, Classical Man. Coyote Creek on the outside. G Spring, yes. Coyote Creek, second, photo, third, maybe classical man in one.
Here they come. And jumping off, 1A Eagle Boots. Eagle Boots went on a break and quickly got to correct the problem as they hit around the bend on the outside. Searching for the lead is the ideal weather. Public Life, though, has outstepped them, and the Sire State champ, Public Life, has pocketed ideal weather. Just so like uh, that she did in the Sire Stake final, so it's deja vu all over again. Anyway, in third is Zip's image as they head up to the quarter. Then it's Perfect Sign. Another couple back to Pacific Philly. Then it's Bikini Bottom in a quarter of 28 and three ticks. In behind is All-American Karen. Then comes one ace too many and another three back to Eagle Boots who's caught the pack. Oh, they worked their way into the stretch, and Public Life has pretty much done everything asked for her this year. And Public Life takes him down the lane as the public choice, a length and a half up. Ideal Weather is second, Zips Image is third. Perfect Sign is full speed ahead. In tow is Pacific Philly, another three back to Bikini Bottom. Inside, one ace too many. All American Karen and Eagle Boots to a half in 59 and one fifth. So the teletimer smiling on the cause of public life who takes him around the length. On the outside, perfect sign. On the inside, ideal weather. And covered up is Pacific Philly. Third over is Bikini Bottom on the inside. Zips image. Halfway on the back stretch. And Cat's looking behind and getting further away is the head of Perfect Sign as Public Life has opened up. On the inside, Ideal Weather still right in the frame. Perfect Sign is down but not out. Coming on is Bikini Bottom. On the inside, Pacific Philly. Three quarters in 128. Around the bend they go. No excuse for Public Life has controlled this all the way. Ideal Weather is second. Way out outside coming on is Bikini Bottom. It's Public Life holding them all safe on the outside Bikini Bottom. Just about getting second. Uh, Public Life has done it again. Second Bikini Bottom. Then came Ideal Weather. Here they come. Falling back is America's Finest and scoring last is answering the call the fastest. Punk Man will have an easy seat behind. Oncoming is a priceless gem. And next is Earl's Charm K. As they hit the first, Ben America's Finest got his act together in fifth. And it's Shallow Hanover. And lastly, Pasture got them all to pass as they head up the back stretch. With scoring last, holding the lead, Punk Man is a handful for Pearson second. A couple lengths back to Priceless Gem who slid in third. Earl's Charm K is fourth. Another three back to America's Finest. Shallow Hanover got one beat, and that is Pasture. And what you saw just happened in a quarter at 29 and one fifth. Scoring last leads them around. Tailgating in second is Punk Man outside and coming on fast as America's Finest was going out as Earl's Charm K, but Sears beat him to the punch with Cello Hanover. So they head down the stretch with scoring last. Soon to have company in the form of America's Finest. On the inside, Punk Man, Cello Hanover is slowly working up the outside. And comes a bottled up priceless gem. So is Earl Strom K on the outside pasture. A half and one minute even. Clubhouse turn. Scoring last. Holding to a slight lead. America's Finest is all over him in second. Inside, Punk Man is third. Outside, Cello Hanover. Then the priceless gem. Third over pasture as they head up the back stretch. It's Scoring last, gritting his teeth and hanging on ahead. On the outside, America's Finest still pounding away. Punk Man is trying to get out of this. We'll have to wait his turn. Cello Hanover is just off cover. Three quarters in 129 flat. It's scoring last, far and away from out of the woods. On the outside, America's Finest falling back a little bit more. But Punk Man is good to go at the inside. Cello Hanover is wide. Heading for home, scoring last is not out of the woods yet. Gonna have to deal with Punk Man very soon, and soon is now. It's scoring last a length and a half. Punk Man is wearing him down. Bearing out is scoring last. Punk Man on the outside. Scoring him. Punk Man. Punk Man. Got it by a head. Scoring last. Second Earl's Charm K. Here they come. And a try to Nego and K line. Proudly steps out of there with always on guard doing the same. And K-Line, who wants it more in a tug-of-war for the lead early, would always on guard. Another five back behind his heated duel to Touchstone. Then comes Sweet Vintage. Arc Denmo finding a place at the inside. ENS Gliding Condor in behind Reelam and Don. And lastly, PJ's Niagara.
Okay, line has won the battle and leads the line up a length and a half. Always on guard second. Another five back to touchstone. And it's Sweet Vintage. Ian has Gliding Condor checking through a quarter in 28 and three-fifths. So K-Line came off the gate like a tiger and leads it a length and a half. Always on guard is second. And then it's a three-length separation back to Touchstone. In behind Sweet Vintage, Ian has Gliding Condor. Cat hasn't pulled the trigger for the second time. No need. There's no one pulling behind. It's Real and Don and PJ's Niagara rounding him out as they work down the lane and over to the half. And K-Line leads it. On the inside, always on guard. Touchstone goes. Ian has Gliding Condor goes. And buried now is Sweet Vintage at a half and 59 and one-fifth. It's K-Line still doing good things, leading at a full length on the outside. Touchstone on the inside, always on guard. ENS Gliding Condor is neck-to-neck -neck and nose-to-nose -nose with Sweet Vintage. And it's a pair back to Realem and Don. Midway on the back stretch, K-Line continues to do good things on the outside. Touchstone is heads apart. The head, though, it's the head of Smith and the horse's head of Touchstone. On the inside, always on guard. Real and Don is starting to rev up the engines. Inside, Sweet Vintage. Three quarters and one, 28 and one. K-Line takes him into the stretch first, leading at a length and a half. Always on guard second. And way outside, Ian has Gliding Condor. But K-Line is all serious today, and he's also home free. K-Line, wire to wire. Second, always on guard then Sweet Vintage in 157. Here they come. And with a little help from Brennan, unspoken, comes out loud on the outside. Foxy Towner, smile is near. In behind the big favorite, and now losing it was Foxy Towner. Foxy Towner went to a gallop, and unspoken going to have the lead with no one around her early. Smile is near his second, a length back, why not Molly? Space of another three to Terrific Pacific. In behind the Cisco Sheik, moving back to Trudeau and correcting the wrong, but in last, Foxy Towner. So unspoken leads it to the quarter in 28 and four fifths, and unspoken carrying Brennan along on a cruise mile, leading it a length and a half. Smile is near his second. And comes, oh, why not Molly? Another pair and a few inches back to Terrific Pacific. Working back to Cisco Chic Trudeau. And lastly, Foxy Towner. Six of them in the rearview mirror of Unspoken, who has all at a mercy. It's Unspoken. Three lengths up. Second smile is near. Then comes, why not Molly? Through a Manzi's all over Terrific Pacific to no avail. Then comes the Cisco Chic outside Trudeau. One time around in 59 and one fifth. So it's been a walk for Unspoken, leading it a length. Nearest, Smile is near. Why not Molly is third. On the outside from last is Trudeau, almost in a no-win situation. On the inside, Terrific Pacific. As they continue up the backside, and Unspoken with command and control. And Smile is near, filed by Why Not Molly, but full command held by Unspoken in 129 even. Still unchallenged, Unspoken has the lead a length and a half. Second, Smile is near. Why not Molly is third? Trudeau is fourth. Inside, Terrific Pacific. And they head for home. And now Brennan has Unspoken for a little bit more. And she complies and spreads it to three. Second, Smile is near on the outside. Why not Molly? And Terrific Pacific. And Unspoken was much too much. Second, Smile is near over Why not Molly and Terrific Pacific in 150.